And this is really the only accessible put-in point at this end of the river. The next possible access point is some five miles downstream. Are you going to muscle this yourself? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> You made that look really easy. <laughs> Many years of practice. <laughs> this river has a big history of various industrial uses along its banks, which is why the river became to be so polluted because Decades ago, there were no re requirements, or certainly not stringent requirements like we have now as far as what can be dumped into the river. Maybe 30 years ago, there was a group that was advocating for some of the remediation work, and that effort consists of digging out several feet of polluted sediments, putting down a layer of carbon, and then putting a couple of feet of gravel or clay on top of it to cap it, so all the pollution isn't removed, but, it, but at least it's sealed down so people shouldn't come into contact with it. This section has been remediated. The ponds where they pumped all the dredgings, and they're actually right over here on the other side of the toll road from where we are now. Most of this water is actually Lake Michigan water that has made one pass through the U.S. steel facility for cooling equipment. So the water itself, unless they have some horrible equipment malfunctions, should be pretty clean quality water. One of the benefits of this river is that no matter how dry the season is, but this river always has enough water to paddle. I think right up here a little ways, we'll, we'll have the Ambridge Man neighborhood of Gary and pass by Ambridge Park. All the riprap rock that you see along the shore are for stabilization of the banks. So apparently at some point in time, the banks had started eroding, laying down a, the riprap helps stabilize the banks. Engaging in some sort of a rhythmic activity for a number of hours, it actually has some physiological benefits. You reach sort of a state of Zen where it's you, the boat and the water and nothing else matters. That actually might be an overflow place for the, the city sewers. A lot of the communities here have combined sewers. They take sewage and also rainfall. And during very heavy storms, when the capacity of the sewer system is exceeded, they dump water in the river. Now in recent decades, the EPA has been trying to get communities to build structures to minimize these combined sewer overflows. But unfortunately, it still happens, although at a lesser frequency than it used to. Well, now that we're past the railroad tracks, I think we're bordered on both sides of the river by U.S. steel property. It's probably something that's been there for 50 plus years. But you can see right up here, the bottom is rusted out. And when the steel mill was, was built, they actually blocked off the river mouth. They made the Marquette Park lagoons. They dug the Indiana Harbor Ship Canal. So that, in effect, reversed the flow of the river. On this section, it flows to the west. 
just past the Indiana Harbor Ship Canal, it flows to the east. And then further on past the Hammond Sanitary District, it flows west again, which is really strange because normally you think of rivers flowing only in one direction. Right up on the bank there, there's two lagoons, which might be part of the final water treatment the steel mill does before they release water into the river. The lagoons are elevated, so they just overflow into the discharge and into the river. I like what the sign said, protect the, in the environment is everyone's responsibility. We see a boom extending across the river. Most of the times you see booms across the river, they're made of some kind of absorbent material that absorbs oil or other stuff that might be in the water, even though there's not supposed to be oil and other stuff in the water. Now we can just sort of park here for a while. This is a pretty big steel plant, so I'm sure that from wherever they pull water from Lake Michigan, it goes to different parts of the plant. So that's why you see one discharge like straight ahead. And then there's another discharge a ways up. You can see some white frothy water further upstream. But if you look at the surface of the water itself, you can see there, there's a pretty good flow right here. If you look down into the water, you can see the water here is very clear. So the water column itself is fairly clean. It's mostly Lake Michigan water. All the nasties are in the sediments at the bottom of the river. From 50, 60, 100 years of people dumping crap in the river. You know, 50, 60, 100 years ago, there were no environmental regulations like we have now. So the rivers were always a dumping place. Is it possible to reverse all those years of dumping? At a cost of billions and billions of dollars, sure. I gotta get a picture of you too.